Wow, touchline continues this particular afternoon. Right now, we discuss about African Cup of Nations currently in Cameroon, and we give preview of what is expected to happen tonight, of course, at 7 p.m. East African Cup time. Gambia taking on the host Cameroon in a duo die fixture. There are reports coming in that, you know, five players from Gambian national team have tested positive. But, of course, the team is insisting that they have done their independent testing and the players are fit to play. Eric Aganya is joining us. Barry Seal, of course, still with us. Eric, what's happening <laughs> as far as African Cup of Nations is concerned? Before we get to that game, there has been upsets. Some favorites who are tipped to win the championship have all been, you know, eliminated from the competition. We saw what happened with Ivory Coast, you know. Eric Bailey, mm. a player that plays for your favorite <laughs> club, Manchester United, <laughs> misfiring during penalty shootouts <laughs> and, you know, the likes of Senegal, though favorites, but not convincing. Yes, yes, yes. What's, what's the way forward? I, I, I think everybody was uh, really disappointed or everybody was uh, really shocked when the likes of Algeria were being eliminated mm -hmm. because bearing in mind they are defending champions. We saw what happened to Nigeria also. Uh, they were knocked out. And also we've seen uh, recently we saw what happened to, to Ivory Coast. I think there's some sluggishness in the, in the big teams. I don't know what happened. Is it that they are they, they, professional footballers really want to go back to Europe <laughs> or what is it? Because uh, I couldn't understand what uh, you just mentioned, Eric. By I couldn't understand what he was doing, because you have an opportunity. The shoulders, uh, you have uh, everything. The team is depending on you to take that penalty. It's not uh, a place where you now want to to, to try some funny tricks, a non look, a no look penalty. Mm -hmm. Seriously, mm -hmm. when uh, you 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 are qualifying to the to the to the quarterfinals, I think that was a joke. That was a joke. And Mo Salah had to score the winning penalty. You know, it had to be reserved for him so yeah, that yeah. He, he converts it mm. uh, yeah. as the last taker yeah. of the penalty. And he did it very well and Egypt are through to the quarters. I suspect Egypt also were uh, saving the best for the last. Uh, and when they get to such a stage, they become very serious and focused. And it, it's not a surprise that... Uh, you know, Mohamed Salah took the last penalty. He's confident. I don't remember if he's ever lost <laughs> a decisive <laughs> penalty. So, uh, Egypt are through. So now we wait for Cameroon Gambia to. Cameroon Gambia this yeah. particular evening. Can it be a fixture resembling what happened when Cameroon, the hosts, played against Comoros? Comoros, you know, one of their players getting regarded at the earlier stage, but still, you know. Mm. They did very well, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember the game. Everybody was saying that uh, Cameroon won the game, but Comoros won the hearts of everybody. Yes, because uh, or they gave it all, mm. and uh, we can see uh, Cameroon is fluking through. Yeah. Because you look at the game against Comoros, 11 versus 11, uh, Comoros could have uh, brought in an upset. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen Gambia, uh, nobody expected Gambia to make it to the, to the quarterfinals. So Cameroon have not really been convincing. Uh, I think there's only one game that they won by four goals. Uh, I think it was against Ethiopia or something. Uh, convincing win. Mm -hmm. They have not really been convincing as a team. And uh, we've seen accusations and counter accusations of a player, uh, none of their players has tested positive throughout the, tournament. the tournament kicked off the tournament. while other teams are <laughs> having other teams reports of their players nine, testing positive there are five like uh, gambia we are being told uh, and, and and confirmed uh, sources are saying there are five players uh, who are who have tested positive although gambia have come out and said they did their independent test and uh, none of their players has tested so we have that game of musical chairs eh? and uh, cameroon are fluking through and uh, maybe maybe today it may be an upset. So it's a strategy because my producer Fadil Atman is telling me that, you know, every time Cameroon is about to face an opponent, mm -hmm. yes. it happens that, you know, most of the opponent players are uh, testing uh, positive while positive. Cameroon's yes. players are intact. And so first, is it a strategy? It's, it's like it's but a strategy. But that's not sportsmanship, right? Exactly. They want no. to win it through hook and crook. Yes. Uh, uh, already they have the home ground advantage. Uh, they have the fans on their side. And I think uh, on a fair uh, uh, table, uh, they could have lost against Comoros. Because look at Comoros, they had players out. Uh, that confusion of uh, players testing positive and negative, you see, it destabilizes the team and eventually throws the coach into panic. And that is what Cameroon is, is doing to their opponents. Barry, Tunisia up against Burkina Faso at 10 p.m. East African time. Tunisia has also advanced through, you know, uh, not really convincing. They struggled. Remember, they went to the round of 16 from group stages, one of the third 
mm. uh, best finishers yes. and they didn't finish as you know first and two in their respective group yeah. so do they have an edge over their opponents this particular evening? yes tunisia has an edge what they need to do is bury their chances i i, I don't think they have been very effective up front yes um yes they've not even considered many goals but uh Burkina faso uh, to me they remind me of uh, you know Malawi or Sierra Leone. These are uh, tournament underdogs and they can cause upsets. So Tunisia must be very cautious. Uh, otherwise Burkina Faso might pull a fast one, might pull a surprise. But uh, Tunisia have to be hungry, especially the likes of Jaziri, and they have to bury the game as early as possible. Otherwise, if you allow, for example, Burkina Faso to settle in, uh, then Tunisia might have a problem. But I see Tunisia going through. What is shocking, I mean, 2004 African Cup of Nations, when Kenya qualified, and uh, while eliminated at the group stage, I remember them facing Burkina mm. first and beating them 3 0 mm. during their last group clash. Mm. Dennis Oliech was on the score mm. alongside the likes of John Baraza, mm. former Sovapaka tactician. Mm. And you know, Sovapaka are the Afcon, <laughs> are <laughs> the Afcon, <laughs> while <laughs> Kenya is not. <laughs> Burkina Faso, I mean, that, 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 that speaks a volume about uh, how we take uh, the seriousness we take the sport mm. uh, in Kenya with. Because uh, you look at uh, countries like uh, Burkina Faso, countries like Comoros. Look mm. at what Comoros has been able to do. That's a very small country, mm. but they manage their sports or their football properly. So that mm. comes to our management and preparation for these tournaments. Mm. Because this is a year that we expected we'll make it to the AFCON. Yes. Uh, look at uh, what happens in the qualifier. We fire and hire coaches at will. Mm. We destabilize <laughs> the team. Mm. Eventually, there's no uh, 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 continuity. Uh, when a coach wants to get uh, that continuity, he's discontinued. There are rumors that Kimanzi wants is likely to come back again. Again. <laughs> again. <laughs> so you see, such kind of things uh, are destabilizing our, our football. And we are seeing, as uh, he said, uh, Burkina Faso. I'm putting my money on Burkina Faso today. Mm. Burkina Faso have a youthful team. Mm. And if you look at the previous matches, they are able to knock the ball around. Mm. They have the confidence. Mm. And if they are able to put the, to take the chances they will get, then Tunisia are in trouble. Mm. Tunisia have not been on form mm. at this AFCON. Mm. But is there a likelihood that Minos can you know, uh, pull a surprise and lift the title. Because uh, most of the, of the heavyweights have already been eliminated from the competition, yeah, you know, yeah. the likes of Nigeria, yeah, yeah. Algeria defending champions, mm. Ivory Coast, mm. you know, Ghana mm. getting eliminated at the group stage, and the coach was fired. Mm. I think uh, now it's time to be serious. So when people <laughs> are looking at quarters, uh, I, I, I'm afraid uh, Gambia, Burkina Faso, unless uh, a mystery, a magic happens, but if they are confident, like I said, they can pull through. But also, it's only Gambia and Burkina Faso remaining. The rest yes. are the big boys. Yes. The Zekutorio Guinea. The Guinea, sorry. Zekutorio Guinea. The Guinea. Uh, if, but I, I, I was talking to somebody. If you allow at least two North African countries to get into this stage, one of them will. One lift of it. them will lift it. So. And it's uh, a North African derby tomorrow. Yes, yes. Uh, Egypt Morocco and Egypt. against Morocco. Yes. Big clash. Yeah, big clash. The good thing, one of them will go home. <laughs> <laughs> so that, you know, neutralizes. But uh, Senegal, Cameroon, I see them going through. Uh, I don't I don't really think uh, the Minos will, will manage, especially once you go to... There is no I, possibility. I, I doubt. Cameroon are the home team. Maybe they can be favored. Senegal looks strong now. Uh, one of Egypt and Morocco, one of them is going through, so... Sadio Mane was doubtful, now he's fit to start, uh, and yeah, that yeah. is a big announcement coming yeah, yeah, in for the Tananga Lions. He's confirmed to start, although they have been misfiring. If you yeah. look at uh, the expectations and you look at the squad mm -hmm. uh, that they have, the caliber of players that they have, you expect them to to be scoring so many goals. Yes. But they have been winning 1-0, 1-1, one one, mm -hmm. and uh, they've not scored a lot of goals. But uh, him now, talking about him, I think also uh, it, 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 it reflects negatively on us as Africa, because uh, the the player welfare, look at when he got the injury, look at the response mm. uh, of the medical team. Very immediate. Uh, very immediate. Uh, we need to, to, to invest more mm. in, in player welfare mm. uh, because you see that was a life-threatening injury. Mm. Uh, he, he, he fell in a very awkward manner and uh, it's, it's miraculous that he was able to, 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 to wake up and uh, he's fit to play. But him playing, it's a big boost yeah. to the Senegalese team because he's a player who can bring in the individual brilliance. When the team is not 
doing very well, that one chance takes it and scores. And you've seen uh, the likes of him and Mo Salah, uh, they can withstand that pressure. I, I saw the first game, they were, they, 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 they were almost drawing, got a penalty in the last minute. Many players may not take that chance, and he took the chance and scored the penalty uh, faultlessly. So I think him coming back, it's a big team, it's a big win for, for, for Senegal. Big win for Senegal. You're saying, you know, the derby we're looking forward to mm. tomorrow beating Egypt and Morocco. One of them obviously will be eliminated, but where do we place our money? No, I think uh, it's going to be tight. And first of all, yeah. how come ZH was not called up? Now that's interesting because uh, <laughs> I think also because ZH is not really a regular at Chelsea, they would have expected him to be regular. Uh, maybe that's why the coach decided him to, to stay out. But apart from that, Morocco have very quality yes, players, yes. even without ZH out. Same to Egypt, have individual uh, talent like Mo Salah. Uh, I think that's going to be very tight. It might be decided by uh, sport kicks or 2-1 or 1-0 win. Uh, I, I think I'd, I'd favor Egypt to go through. Generally, what's your assessment about African Cup of Nations uh, uh, 2023 edition? Uh, rescheduled 2021 uh, edition. Yeah, I've been disappointed with the with Cameroon as the host uh, in terms of working well on their grounds, the venues. Uh, apart from that, uh, officiating has been terrible, to say the least. We have had very questionable calls by, by the refereeing. And I think this is one of the tournaments we've seen a lot of red cards. Yes, some of them are genuine, but we've seen uh, also very physical officiating, like uh, you remember that Zambian referee. Um, but also we've seen talent coming up, talent showing in, in, in that stage. So it's been a tournament of mixed, you know, issues coming through. <laughs> what else can we talk about as far as... I think to add on what you said about, about officiating, yeah. officiating has, uh, uh, has been terrible. Yeah. Has been terrible. And also, for me, uh, I think... Game getting uh, ended before uh, full time. Before full time. Yeah. Uh, 86 the VR, minutes, the VR, then three yeah. minutes later, 89. The VR advising the referee. There that came in, you know, that, you know, the center referee, the man who was presiding over that mm. uh, game was, you know, uh, undergoing some tribulations, health issues related to hell, uh, heat stroke. Heat stroke. But you see, there's a fourth official yeah. who can step in in case, in case of such kind of cases. Mm. And the same same referee in the same game uh, was uh, contradicting the VAR. Mm. That, that, that one, you cannot put it on the heat stroke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, if you look at this African Cup of Nations, you find that, uh, in my opinion, the big players did not live up to yes. expectation. Uh, we were expecting uh, Mo Salah to come and dazzle Africa. Mm. Uh, nothing. Yes. We were expecting uh, Sadio Mane to, 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 to do what he does at Liverpool. We We've not seen that. Mm. We've not seen that. Sam Gitahi, an Aden football fan, and also one of the uh, panelists on this particular show, saying that ZH faked an injury last year, opted to remain at Chelsea. The coach got angered after that. I, I heard the coach saying that uh, ZH, since when he was still at Ajax, he had the hunger to, to, to play. Mm. But when he went to Chelsea, it's like he, he got into a comfort zone. And uh, the coach decided to leave him out completely because th that uh, that hunger is no longer there. Mm. It's like he got a big club and uh, he, he got comfortable. And uh, we've seen his chances at Chelsea. Uh, they've been uh, slim. Apart from right now, after uh, he scored a wonder goal the other day uh, when they were playing against, I think, Tottenham. And, um, but basically, he's been on the bench most of the time. Yeah. And, you know, a coach's decision in the event that, you know, he does that, he left him out of the squad and Cameroon happens to lift the title, <laughs> he will be vindicated. He will say, I did what is in the best interest of the <laughs> team and the <laughs> will remain yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what happened, it was which edition when Cameroon defender playing for Liverpool? Mm. He, uh, was, he was he was he was not called up. Mm. Yeah. I think this guy who plays for Liverpool as Liverpool, a defender, as a defender, Joel Matip. Joel Matip. Yeah, Joel Matip yeah. Yeah. Yes, he was not called, and yeah. you know the team went ahead to, to do very well yeah. in that edition. Yeah. But you see that that is that is the problem with African players. If you look at right now, you are seeing that the young players are really playing, giving it all in the African Cup. But once they get those big clubs, they become comfortable. They don't want to play for their national team anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it calls, it says a lot about uh, our patriotism and our love for our countries. Yeah. Uh, I can also add by saying sorry, yes. that uh, I can also congratulate coaches for being bold. Some teams like Malawi and Zimbabwe decided to go like 90% local players, home yes. players. Uh, that means uh, giving chance to even home-based players, it, it encourages these boys. And uh, we've seen a lot of talent 
uh, even Zimbabwe did well with the, without their star Kamal Billiard. So it means if you give them a platform, they will show what they can do this young boy. Like yeah. even in Kenya, we can yeah. try that, you know, yeah. uh, qualify for continental football competition, then use our local best talents rather than going for foreign best, you players. know. The problem with star players, there's a lot of ego and, come, uh, and you know, they want to show. But, but it has to be jail and blend. Yeah, yeah of, course, uh, of course. You mix both yeah. uh, local base and, you know, those playing professional football overseas. Anyway, away from matters AFCON, but still related to African football, we saw the comments for Gianni Infantino, president of World Football Governing Body FIFA, saying that, you know, Banal World Cup competition will help you know Africans not to risk crossing <laughs> Mediterranean and you know later on he said that he was quoted out of context mm. because it is something that has formed the base of discussion online with people now saying that you know come on yeah. how can Infantino talk that of Africans no, I think uh, what did he mean Infantino is just being realistic and <laughs> saying that uh, the Banal uh, World Cup will uh, bring more resources maybe if Africa is given a ch chance mm. to host will pump in more resources, we develop our structures, we strengthen our leagues mm -hmm. so that these players don't need to to, 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 to want mm -hmm. to go out. Mm -hmm. And you look at uh, the, 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 the Arab countries, what they have done, Morocco, uh, they've increased salaries in, the, in their leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had Egypt, and uh, you find that players who play for clubs like Al Hali will not want to go to Europe yes, and, and, yes, and play because uh, they, they have everything they'll get in Europe. Mm -hmm. And if we have everything that we'll get in Europe, we'll not go to, to, to Europe. Mm -hmm. And you see, we should not take it negatively. We should take those points positively and develop our football structures in Africa. Because if our players, let's just pick Kenya for example, if our players are well paid, they'll not cross over to Tanzania. They'll not cross over to Zambia. Because you see our players crossing over to Zambia, to South Africa, within Africa. Now, South African players want to cross over to, 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 to Europe to go and play. Mm -hmm. But if we develop that and we have sponsors and uh, we, we, we run our leagues properly, uh, I don't think those players will go. Because nobody would like to leave his family here and uh, go chasing uh, uh, money mm -hmm. if you're given the money here. Mm -hmm. So you see, we should take it positively. However, I disagree with him when he, we talk about now a uh, World Cup coming after two years. Uh, that will be too, uh, too harsh on the players. World Cup, after every two years, it will water down the profile yeah. of the competition yes. because they say that, you know, when that happens mm -hmm. and uh, uh, teams happen to be increased from 32, to 48. To 48, yes. yes. African countries will get a chance, even uh, Kenya might qualify. <laughs> no, I think, it's, it's like you said, it's going to water down, neutralize the competition element. Uh, first of all, like Eric said, two years is short. We have other competitions in between. We have uh, Euro Cup, we have CONCACAF. So, I mean, when will they be played? And AFCON, when will it be scheduled? Uh, so, we're looking at a situation where it will be too much football for players who don't have time to rest. And uh, it will definitely neutralize uh, the, 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 the competitive effect for, 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 for clubs. And also, I think the president in Patina maybe was misquoted. And it was a heavy political statement. Remember when you talk about crossing the Mediterranean, it's not just about football. It's people going to look for alternatives to take care of their families. So unless he probably also gets to clarify what he meant, uh, to me, that statement wasn't related to football. Maybe it needs to clear the air. I've seen some press release indicating that Patrick Motepe, president mm. of Confederation of African Football, yeah. has received, you know, a lot of uh, responses from FA presidents yeah. in several countries yeah. in Africa, saying yeah. that, you know, they were impressed by the speech of Gianni Fatinho. <laughs> It is something that is not going down well with a lot of football followers yeah. in this particular continent, saying that we, we just ask kissers. That's a, that's a big problem. If we can just celebrate over, because the father has spoken, um, FIFA is the parent, we are not looking at the details, the inner, you know, how this will affect players, this will affect leagues. I'm wondering how leagues, will they reschedule how leagues run? For example, will they say, tighten your leagues? You know, like instead of six months, play it in four months. Because for you to play World Cup every two years, these FA bosses must understand uh, the, the effects of fatigue, injuries, and all this stuff. Unless now they say every team has 35 players, and with leagues like in uh, Kenya, for example, where you can't afford even to play 25 players, how will that work? So we have to look at the 
the pros and cons of all this. But I've seen it is something that is likely to be rejected by several quarters, yes. stakeholders of football yeah. in the world, especially football players. Kylian Mbappe, Robert Lewandowski said no. Yeah. But you that, see, the, he, hell of he, here I don't think the player has the power. Yeah. Because here are the sponsors. <laughs> yes. The sponsors, because uh, there are people who are throwing money into yeah. it eh, yeah. and are thinking if a uh, World Cup comes after two years, eh, mm. uh, we'll make a killing every two years because uh, they, 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 they'll be able to do their marketing mm. for their products mm. uh, after every two years. Mm. But nobody cares about the players. And that's where now we, we find that organizations that uh, uh, defend the players mm. have slept on the job. Mm. Because uh, so they, 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 you might reject the directive, but, you but you have, have no choice. Uh, uh, for example, if you're owned by Nike, you're, you're dressed by Nike, the, the Nike will take away the sponsorship. Yes. No, you have no choice. Yeah. And uh, you have to show up for, for, for that because now uh, the, 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 the sponsors and uh, the marketers uh, and the betting companies have also come in. They've invested a lot of money. Mm. They're addressing these players. If you're putting on Nike mm. and Nike says we are going to have a uh, World Cup after every two years, you have no choice as a player. If you're putting on Adidas and Adidas has said we are going to do that, you, you have no choice as a player. But what we would like to appeal to these people is that look at the, the human part. Mm. You look at, like this year, we are going to have, we have had Mo Salah playing African Cup of Nations. We have had the same thing Mo Salah wants to represent uh, Liverpool uh, to win the league. And That's the why Champions they are fighting, league. the Champions League. And then, should they qualify for the World Cup? Again. In December, he has to play again the World yeah. Cup. Are you seeing that player? And then people. again, go back and start a season. Yeah. You see, it, it, the longevity of that player yeah. is shortened. Yes. Is shortened mm. Because there will be injuries, there will be fatigue, there is no pre-season, there is mm. no rest. Mm. And uh, that, is, uh, that is not something that we would like to encourage. Uh, and maybe Max, I can yes. add, there is also the element of TV. Probably the FIFA and... Uh, uh, okay, let's say FIFA are under, are under pressure from, let's say, broadcasters. Broadcast rights money is too much. Yes. FIFA wants that money. Yeah. So these guys have no choice but to do as... Uh, as they, the uh, you know, yeah. uh, sponsors want... Yeah, them sponsors are key. Yeah. yeah, and sponsors are the bosses. Let's talk about something else. I think uh, this weekend there is no football in Europe. Yes. What yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. most Kenyans are <laughs> keen followers of yeah, what you know. PL. What the yeah. Sekafa Secretary General, former <laughs> my good friend Nicholas Musa <laughs> said, you know Kenyans, Kenyans, Kenyans sit in Nairobi West. Mm to take beer. Yeah. But they have forgotten Kenya is playing Kenya <laughs> Sultan at the yeah, Stadium. Yeah, and yeah. you know he was extremely very right because yeah, yeah. you know we never follow what is close to our heart. You know whenever Kenya is playing uh, during you know uh, this formal assignments like African Cup of Nations qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers, mm -hmm. and Arsenal is playing against West Bromwich Albion, someone would prefer going to the joint to catch a European yeah, clash. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, going to the stadium at the National <laughs> Stadium to watch Kenya, playing against Mali. Yeah. But you see, as they always say, me have interviewed several fans, you know, not necessarily formal interview, mm -hmm. TV, radio, but just talking on the streets, asking them, why do, don't they love Africa, Kenyan football? They say, no value for my money. Yeah. <laughs> I will go watch Kenya playing against Botswana. Yeah. Maybe dull or boring fixture. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing to, to write home nothing about. Nothing to write home uh, about. Uh, yeah. Are they justified? They are justified because, again, if you look at not only even the national team, even our league, uh, the quality, yeah. uh, the quality uh, sometimes is uh, is low. Yes. And uh, a Kenyan would rather say, let me sit in a bar, spend my money, rather than go and get bored. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's leisure. Uh, yes. You see, it's on a Saturday, he wants to entertain himself. And that that, that, that needs that means we need to, re to raise our game. We need to raise our game in terms of organization, in terms of uh, fielding of players. Um, let us develop players who are exciting. And we have those players. If we can put structures in place, we'll be home and dry. And uh, you see the wrangles that are also there. You saw what happened in the women football. Uh, one, uh, the FKF writing that uh, <laughs> we shall not field a team. Mm. And uh, the team is in camp. It's mm. preparing. It's such kind of things. Eh? Mm. They, don't, they don't all go well. They don't go, it's very unfortunate. Because these ladies have been in camp. They have been training. Uh, why don't you give them a chance to represent the country? Mm. Yeah. And you know the latest being that you know government has uh, reiterated their commitment through yes. Ministry of Sports. Uh, yes, yes, I saw the letter. I saw the letter. Yes, the team is 
at the camp at more international sports yes. center kasarani intensifying their preparation to play against uganda yes. so that they can make it to uh, african women cup of nations yes. happening in morocco right yes. yeah. this year yeah. and that uh, information circulating around the one that has gone viral should be treated as rumors and misinformation yeah but you see this guy this guy is wrote to calf <laughs> You are you're writing to CAF, yet you are not in office yeah. as per the caretaker management committee taking over. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that is really fair mm. uh, to these girls mm. because uh, they have been in camp, they have been training. Mm. Uh, they need that opportunity mm. and uh, that exposure mm. because we need games. Mm. And uh, during the caretaker uh, committee, we have the Kenya play Rwanda. Mm. Uh, the, the boys, the, the boys played Rwanda and mm. there was no problem. So yeah. I think it's only fair for these women to be given that chance to play against uh, uh, Uganda. Mm. And uh, they may make it. So, yeah, what it so, so sorry, uh, Max uh, yes. and Erica. I just got some inside information from even some people at CAF. They're saying, I mean, this is already, this is of course, this is uh, public knowledge. CAF listens only to FKF. They don't care whether the FKF has been disbanded. According to them, the Teka Committee was elected by nobody. So it might be wrong for an individual who has been suspended to write to them, but to them, this individual. <laughs> <laughs> that is it's legitimate. Still legitimate. Yes. Yes. So, according to them, it has already been decided that Kenya must forfeit this much. So, I don't know, like I was telling you earlier, either this matter goes to CAS or minister sends somebody or she goes herself to Egypt. CAS meaning Court of Arbitration for Sports. Sport. Yes, yes, yes. Or, because according to the Kenya government, our ladies are in camp. According to Keteka Committee, the ladies are in camp. If indeed CAF decides to give Uganda that back to go to Morocco. Mm. And Kenya had not given the walkover intentionally because they were ready to travel next month. So even the, the issue of what is the rush, it's February 17th. Why yeah. make this decision now? Yeah. So this matter might force the government to go to CAF or go and talk to uh, to, to CAF. But CAF doesn't recognize this. This caretaker committee. So we are in a quagmire. Let the law take it its course. Yeah. I don't know now what will happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially to that person who allegedly authored the letters. The letter, yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, I've mm -hmm. seen that it is from a CEO of FKF, Barrio Tieno, and yeah. I've seen some quote that I read it out of malice. I don't know how to read that. Uh, and of course, it is something that we're keeping it, an eye on. It, it may be malicious, because yeah. why didn't he write when uh, Kenya was playing Rwanda, yeah. the, 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 the national team? Sure, sure. Because, sure, sure. Uh, the, the, because the, the caretaker also, management yeah. committee was still there. Fact, yes, yes, why didn't he write? Why right right now? And you see, they are the same same. You see, uh, it's 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 really bad for for the women football. There's the same same people. After uh, the women uh, league ran for a whole year, they gave them three hundred and fifty thousand yeah. <laughs> prize, prize money. Prize money. So the winners. Then how do we develop? Football in Kenya. Yeah, we need to do something mm -hmm. about football in yeah. Kenya. Frank Lampard mm -hmm. has taken over at Everton. There are, there are rumors that he's, uh, he's likely to take over at Everton. Uh, I think it's a good uh, it's a good stage for him because uh, he has a way of working with young players, and Everton is a is a team that is in shambles right now. They never uh, bought to the ideas of Rafa Benitez after mm -hmm. Carlo Ancelotti left. They never got over it, mm -hmm. and uh, Rafa Benitez was leaving on borrowed time. He had to go. I looked at the candidates. There was uh, Alex. Uh, there was Ferguson, Duncan Ferguson. Why couldn't they elevate him? He's, he looked like a good coach during that time he served in interim. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's, he's the one who was there during the game against Aston Villa. They were mm. the one they lost to Aston Villa 1-0. Mm. Mm. But I think Everton are looking at longevity. They had approached Wayne Rooney, but Wayne Rooney chose to remain at Derby uh, for, the time time <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the time being. Uh, so Frank Lampard is a good choice. Mm. It's a good choice. Donny van der Beek has left United mm. for Crystal Palace on yeah, loan. Yeah. The boy has been frustrated under, you know, Listen, I, at I, the Old Trafford, not getting, not getting regular playing time, you know. Yeah, I blame his agent for, for making that blunder because, look, he was doing well in Ajax. Now he's shipped to uh, Manchester. He doesn't sometimes even make it to the bench. It was a whole lot of frustration. Can Patrick Vieira rebuild him yes. so that, you know? Patrick Vieira can, can do that because I think he believes in that uh, idea of, of encouraging even these young players. Look at what he's done with Conor and Plaga, the former Chelsea man, uh, who is on loan. So maybe von, Don Van der Beek just has to be positive, have a right attitude, and he can resurrect his career because, for me, his career died when he was at Manchester.
I think it's really the system of play. Yeah. His system of play uh, uh, didn't click with Manchester United. Mm. He's, a, he's a kind of play. Look at Juan Mata. Yeah. When Juan Mata came to Manchester United, yeah. system of play, mm. he has not done much mm. because uh, he's a, those are the kind of players who are one, two, they mm. move, they move. Yeah. Manchester doesn't play that kind mm. of football. Yeah. And you see, that's the kind of football that was being played at Ajax. Mm. At one given time, we're playing. We but that's the beautiful football. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. I think we need <laughs> Man United that need to have a manager a Dutch who has a philosophy. Yeah. Yes. Like, because since Sir Alex Ferguson left, Man United has never had a certain, a specific pattern of playing football. Uh, the only person who had a philosophy was Louis Van Gaal. Louis Van Gaal, yeah, Van Gaal yeah. had a philosophy yeah. that he believed in. But a philosophy requires time. Yeah. And you see these big clubs, because of competition now, the uh, people are putting a lot of money. TV <laughs> they, right the about they, 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 they don't give the manager time. Yeah, <laughs> they don't give the manager time. Yeah. You come in one season, half a season, you don't perform, you go. Yeah. <laughs> and Olegano was even lucky. Yeah. He had more time that he was not performing by, by the fact that he was a legend. So you see, uh, if the, the rumors that we may have the Ajax coach coming into Manchester Eric United, Ten Hag, yeah. Yeah, if Ten Hag comes, Good then Don, Don Van Beek will be able to come back and have that. And if they bring in such kind of a manager, he requires time. Yeah. Give him a five-year contract, yeah. give him a four-year contract, yeah. and results will be there. Wow, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you on board this particular afternoon to discuss about sports. Uh, happening both locally and even internationally at an international break which means there is no much of you know European football leagues happening and Kenyan Premier League is also on a break but starlets the fact remains that they are in camp at Kasarani preparing to take on Uganda to see whether they can qualify to Morocco for African Women Cup of Nations despite that misinformation circulating around that they are pulled out and of course it's a development we will be keeping a keen eye on and see how it pans out Eric Aganya, Barry Silla, thank you for coming through and uh, let's do this again next time, same time, same place. My name is Max Olwasike, good afternoon and God bless.